Well, hello and welcome to episode five of the Humpty Do Save for Football Manager. Today we will be taking on McMinn's Lagoon away, and then we will have our Coca-Cola Central West Cup fourth round game against Olympic Kingsway. Since the Alpurulam game where we won 5-1 in the last episode, Humpty Do have been doing very well, defeating Jabiru Joey 6-0, and then following that up with a 5-1 win over Lara Pinta before totally decimating the Vikings FC Alice Springs 12-1 and then finally Garuda were beaten 8-1 so a lot of goals not conceding too many as well so everything is looking up for the boys so let's head off now to McMinn's Lagoon for today's first fixture so we've got the two men up the front today We've been wanting to put Splash and the boy that can't be named up front just to give a bit more potency up front and also to give the boy a bit more opportunities because Splash is obviously a number one pick. So he's always going to be in that side. So wanted to give him an opportunity. But what that does mean is that the attacking left and right wingers have actually moved back into the midfield. So a little bit of a change there, but we'll see how it goes. So Dick Splash will take the armband and lead the team onto the field as we prepare for for this fixture and Fisher to play it out from the back to Beans there we've got a bit of rain in the area and uh, McMinn's Lagoon have picked it up through Lehman and he's pushing forward to Montgomery crosses it in and they're on the board after three minutes so a bit of a shock to the system although it is a home game for McMinn's so they are looking very up for this competition so watching again there's Lehman Putting the ball forward to Montgomery, crosses it in very good. And Janevsky, or whatever his name is, has put the ball in the net. Fisher has no idea what's going on there. So a bit of a problem in defence there. The boys are really going to have to tidy that up. Fisher again playing it out from the back. Seven minutes in now. But again, McMinns are really competing here. Beans puts it forward. But uh, the defence in the midfield is up to the challenge from McMinns as they push it across though. Zas has managed to pick up the ball now and then a splash on the attack down the left crosses it in and it is Kuiper crossing it in but is unable to make the cross there McMinn's on the attack again Lehman pushing forward has a shot but it goes over the bar a lot of action in this first eight minutes of play Fisher playing out from the back again there's Astley and we're looking at Farts there who crosses it back to Astley pushing it forward and McMinn's intercept in the midfield again. So we're getting dominated a little bit in that midfield. Can't really get the ball forward there. Although Scammer pushes it through to Keeper and splashes on and has been denied by the keeper, although we still have a corner. Zas puts the ball in there. It is intercepted by McMinn's Lagoon there. Uh, although Zas goes back for the ball. So four shots to one from McMinn's Lagoon there. They're actually dominating us at the moment. Dixon Balls has done something amazing there a great free kick there and splash gets the rebound so really against the run of play there we've equalized at 1-1 so watching it again Dixon balls puts the ball in hits the woodwork and splashes there for the backup and puts the ball in the net 1-1 but you can't really say that we deserve to be in front there uh, although our XG says that probably we do as Smith goes down the right for... Oh, Fisher was nearly caught out there. Uh, but yeah, McMinn's Lagoon are really competing today. And just a reminder, these guys are just outside the five. So in the competition, you actually have the top five, which will... You have one automatic promotion, and then the others will play off for the second spot. So they, I think they're about seventh or eighth at this point. So they are still fighting to try and get into that top five. So uh, they've got everything to play for here. As Summit pushes it in there. And again, what do we got here? Uh, looks like we've given away a penalty. So Jack, what is it? Janikowski is going to take the penalty. And he has put McMinn's Lagoon in front. It's 2-1 after 22 minutes. So they are all over us today. Probably be needing to uh, rethink a few things. But I think it's mainly in the midfield where we seem to be getting beaten there at the moment. But Beans from out the back is struggling there. Pushes it forward to Splash. Splash tries around the keeper but hits the woodwork. 
not quite a stormtrooper because he had a bit of work to do there, but he would have liked to have done a lot better than that, I think. Interesting to see that Adelaide River and Alperulam are one each in their game, although Adelaide have just gone ahead 2-1 there with Fakakaka scoring the goal. Big Mins Lagoon again on the attack there, although Farts intercepts well. It's Dixon Balls with the ball again, and there's Scammer. Can he do anything more with it? There's Zars putting the ball in, and Fuckboy has put the ball in the net, although he's offside. So let's have a look at that. Yeah, clearly both him and Harry Dixon Balls look like they're offside there. So disappointing. You want to make the most of your opportunities, especially when the other opposition are throwing down the gauntlet and are winning the XG battle at the moment, I might add. So 44th minute. And it is 2-1 to McMinn's Lagoon there. There's Harry Dixon Balls pushing forward again. Pushes it through to Splash. And I think he's offside again. No, the goal is going to stand. So it is 2-2. That was very, very timely. Always important to try and get a goal just before half time. So there is Dixon Balls. And no, that's true. Splash was onside. Did very well to stay onside, in fact. So... Despite having a pretty shocking first half, we've still managed to, to uh, maintain parity there. So two all. As we go to half time, and Goldschmeckel is going to come on for Astley. And we're also going to take Kuefer off and swap him around with Phil Zars before bringing Wayne Kerr on to the right. So Zars is off, Kuefer has gone on to the left, and Kerr on the right. And so for this boy, with, on the attack, and he's been denied by the keeper, Murphy. Good job there. Still 2-2. Got the corner there with Kuiper putting it in, but the keeper is up to the task again. So Murphy's doing quite well up the back. He's their captain today, so he's looking to do the best he can there. Looks like Dixon Balls might have picked up an injury there as well. So uh, have to monitor that because that could be costly to our chances down the, the road because he is a very good player. Mins go close there, but Jan Janikin, Janikewski, whatever his name is, has just put it over the bar there. So 60 minutes in, uh, it is a very tight game. The XG is very tight. The game itself is very tight. Farts with the throw, but we're looking to make a replacement there. We're moving the attacking midfielder back into the midfield, just try and strengthen that a little bit, and Dixon Balls will come off the field. He's recovering from a knock, so it makes sense to bring him off there. So that change should ha happen um, at the next break, I would suggest. There's Beans there, and then Montgomery trying to cross it in there, but thankfully Farts is there, and Goldschmeckel as well at the back. Dixon Balls puts the ball through the splash. Can he break the deadlock? He's rounded the keeper, and there is the goal. So, 3-2 now. So, considering we came back from 2-1 down, this is actually a pretty good performance. Splash doing really well there, not only to street the defence, but also to round the keeper and beat him. So, 3-2, very good to see. But there's still a long way to go in this game, and if you have a look at the XG battle, it is still really tight there. So, McMinns have actually probably just shaded us, I think, in this game, although we've just had a little bit more class when it's counted. But we are still moving through, 75 minutes in now, as Fisher puts the ball back to Beans, who's on a yellow card there, probably have to be careful of that. Kerr puts it through there, can Splash put the ball away? No, he can't, needed to do better there. That would have a great opportunity to go two goals in front, and that really would have meant a lot there, as Samet from McMinns puts the corner in there, but there's flea balls in defence there, holding the ball up for Kerr. And Kerr streaming down the right-hand side there. Rounds his man very well there, and he's going to try and cross it in there for Splash, who again has been denied by his own self there. He's, he's uh, not, not shooting as well as he probably can. I'm wondering if the, the two up the front is actually throwing him out a little bit. So interesting that um, it means that have not stopped going at us. They've actually been really entertaining, and... Their crowd is up for this game too. And there's Farts there going back there. 80th minute there, crossing it back to Fisher, who crosses it back to Goldschmeckel. Goldschmeckel pushing it forward there. Can't find anyone in the middle, although the ball has fallen to flea balls there as Splash on the left-hand side crosses it in, but can't find his man. 
McMinn's pushing forward there. They have Janikowski, and he has put in a worldie there. That is a great goal. Ten minutes left for play. It is 3-3, but that was a goal of absolute class there. He manages to beat the defence there, and he's outside the box, and he's just read that to perfection. Leaves Fisher with no chance, so Janikowski... I think I got his name right finally, has actually done brilliantly there. He's scored all three goals for them, and they are doing well. Conquifa doing something different. Oh, it's okay. It's saying that we've got a goal here. What's going on? It's been ruled out. So obviously there's been a bit of shenanigans in there. We might have to have a look at that a little bit later, but that, that could be the game there. So what could have been a, yeah, the disappointing result. When you have a look at the XG there, um, we really blew them away in the second half XG-wise, but couldn't get the result. So congratulations to McMinn's Lagoon there, but disappointing there for the um, effort that we actually had. And we're just about to have another look at that incident right at full time. So Kuiper preparing to cross the ball and crosses it in. Up goes Goldschmeckel, gets his head on the ball. It looks like Splash and the keeper are involved there. And even though the ball's gone in the net, I think Splash might have actually taken him out. So I think that's what the decision was for. There's Goldschmeckel up again, Splash and the keeper. Cooper goes flying, that's Murphy there. And then Splash puts the ball in the back of the net. So, so looking at the results around the grounds, Adelaide River 3-1 over Alpha Ruralum. So they are only three points behind us. Palmerston Panthers are now eight points points behind Upper Rural. I'm still in fourth and Cal Tukajara are in fifth. So, but as you can see, McMinns are only in seventh. So a win for them today would have actually put them in the five. That's why they went so hard at us and they did. They played really well. Although I thought we were the better team in the second half, we just couldn't make the most of our opportunities. And if we have a look on the Twitter now, we have a few people that were devastated by that result. Angry Candlish, Feels like a defeat given how late the equaliser was and you can't argue with those sentiments. So before we go to our fourth round Coca-Cola Cup game against Olympic Kingsway, we had a game against Scorpions Alice Springs and the boys have bounced back in style. An 11-0 thrashing. And we have some news. Our left defender who has really not had much of a chance this year the 18-year-old American Hyman Shocker is going back to join Knoxville in America. Okay, as we move to Olympic Kingsway match, the team for the day, we've gone back to our 4-2-3-1 with the boy up front on his own there. Dick Splash on the bench again to start. Interesting call there, but I think it's not a bad one. We want to make sure that he gets his rest. As the boys are just warming up, ready to go and kick off with Olympic Kingsway with the ball. There's O'Connell there, kicking it back to Murray there. But the defence is good in the middle there and there's Dixon Balls there, pushing it through there. And Boy has a shot, but it goes over the bar. So, first shot in anger after 20 seconds, but nil-nil is still the score. Olympic Kingsway with the ball, they put it through there, there's Fawcett there to Cassidy, but Farts is back there as well as Bookie, and they're not going anywhere. So, there it is, Scammer pushes the ball through, Dixon Balls is there as well, putting it through to Boy, and then Dixon Balls again, and Boy has put it into the grandstand. I think he wants to get a point for kicking it over the bar somehow, that was uh, never going anywhere near the goals. There's Brown Eye. Kicks the ball back to Kofler for Olympic Kingsway. Looks to cross it in, crosses it in nicely, but the defense is there. Kerr, counter-attacking quite cleverly there, and there's Dixon Balls again, and he has put it into the keeper's arms. Garner, the keeper, saving the ball without too much problems. Three shots to nil, though. The boys are looking pretty good there as Kerr puts a corner in. There's Flea Balls, and he has put it over the bar as well. So we're looking very dangerous at the moment without actually putting anything in the net. So you've got to be careful of that, but we will get there. That 11-0 drubbing uh, in the last round will actually stand them in good stead, give them a lot of confidence. Looks like uh, Dixon Balls has taken a knock there. So we've actually replaced him with Bill Wilkins there. That could change things up a bit. There's Bookie and it is Flea balls with the head into the goal. Well done. 
to Doug Feebles. Excellent job. Just seeing it again as Bookie crosses it in. And Fleeballs are up above the pack, although the defence would be pretty disappointed there. They didn't really compete for the ball there. So 1 0 to Humpty Doo. Remembering that Olympic Kings were actually in a division above us. So to be 1 0 up at half time, away from home, is actually a pretty good effort. Splash is now going to come on for Boy, who's actually had a bit of a mixed bag. Missed a few shots from in front where he probably should have done better. And Chuma Fat's going to come on for Rick Astley. But 11 shots to 1 is pretty emphatic at the moment. 1.5 XG as to 3. Or to 0 0.03, should I say. As uh, Bookie has the ball now. It's been defended by the Olympic Kingsway boys, but not good enough there. I think we're playing on there. I thought there might have been a penalty in the box there. But Giorgio has the ball now to Kerr. Looks to cross it in. Olympic Kingsway's defense is up for the challenge there, but it's Bookie with the ball now. Kofla tries to play it out the back, but Farts is there to clean up. Giorgio pushes it forward, and the keeper has no trouble with that. So Garner with the ball. 55 minutes in, it is 1-0 to the Humpty Doo boys. And Olympic Kingsway try to go on the attack there. There's Robin Brown Eye there, putting the ball in the net. And Dick Meister should be ashamed of himself. That was a very, very poor effort in the goals there. I, you can't really say that Brown I really drilled this one home. I, I mean, he hit it okay, but uh, yeah, that, that was ordinary. Um, yeah, so Dick Meister might find himself on the bench next week. That was poor. But it's 1-1 and Kofla with the ball there. Olympic Kingsway much happier now as to be on equal footing there. It's Beans up the back there. They're playing a patient build up here. Georgia moving it forward. There's Kerr again. And then Wilkins to Kofla. So can't quite find that final pass at the moment. Although there's Wilkins there crossing it in and splash with the head. Takes us to 2-1. Two, so as quick as that, we're back in front. So very good to have the potency that we have in this side. So we'll make the most of it while we can. Because as I've alluded to many times in this save already, these boys won't be here forever. So we've got to take what we can get while we can get it. So we're 62 minutes in now, 13 shots to three. Pretty well sums up the game. I would like to be a little bit more Comfortable in 2-1 though, I must say, as Fleeballs puts it out to Giorgio. Pushing it forward to Kerr, tries to cross it in, and the defence is up to the task there. They try and counter there, um, just struggling to get through the midfield. There's Brown Eye again back to Kofler, and um, he's been very well marked there. Um, trying to see who that player is. Um, but it is Wilkins there, crossing it into Kerr now. Kerr's been very big, he's been very creative, and while he hasn't done much with that, kicked it over the bar, he's threatening every time he gets the ball, and he runs the ball at the defence all the time, so always creating headaches for them. This splash to Wilkins, putting it the ball forward there, out to Kerr again, and crosses it in, and there is Wilkins to finish it off. 3-1 now, 69 minutes in, so a very, very good effort there. Wilkins putting the ball through, picked up by Splash, really well done. Good vision there from Splash to kick it to Kerr, who had no one on him. And then Wilkins too big and too strong in the middle there. You know, gives the uh, defender a little bit of a don't argue as well as uh, we're looking to take Giorgio off now for Bannerman to finish off the last 15 minutes or so. As Kerr prepares for the corner, crosses it in, and it's hit the woodwork there. Could have been four then. So very impressed with the boys, how they've gone on with it. But they've really never been in danger of this game. 17 shots to three, 84th minute. And there's Bookie there to Farts there, holding the ball up, pushing to Scammer, who pushes it back to Chuma Fat there. And there's Bookie holding it up again. And Beans crosses it out there to Bannerman. Just holding up the play a little bit and just threading the needle there is Kerr as well. Hasn't done that well with the delivery on that occasion. Has been easily intercepted. They're pushing it forward again and 
the defenders are nearly getting in each other's way there. There's Brown Eye pushing it forward there, but it is flea balls and scammer with the ball to fart. Crossing over to Bookie who puts the ball in there. Wilkins is competing there, and I think he may have drawn the penalty. He has indeed. And it will be flea balls to take the penalty, and he's put the ball in the net. So four goals to run now with just five minutes of real time before injuries time. With five minutes on the clock, disregarding injury time. So 4-1 now, great job there. Just winding down the clock now, the boys have done themselves really proud today. They've never looked like losing this game and a very thorough victory there, 4-1. After that disappointing draw against McMinn's Lagoon, they'll be very happy with that. Adelaide River have also gone through in extra time there. Fakakakis getting the winner there in the 105th minute, so 4-3. As Harry Dixon Balls is injured, so he's torn his calf muscle and he's going to be out between four and five weeks. That's very disappointing as we look at the quarterfinal draw for the Coca-Cola West Cup. And just looking at that one now, it will be really interesting to see who we end up with. So we have the Sturt Lions away again. So here are the competitions that we are currently in. Obviously we're leading the Premiership by three points there after 19 played. So that means there's another but, uh, 21 games left in the competition. What we're going to be starting to do is skipping through quite a few. Obviously we're doing very well. We'll try and limit it because we want to move into the second season and then get into the FM24 part of the save. Anyway, I think we'll leave it there for today. But thank you for your time and your patronage and really appreciate the comments that have already started coming through. So thank you very much. Cheers. Bye.